the 65th year-end commencement rites of the University of the East. We start this afternoon ceremony with the procession. The University Academic Marshals, Director Marcelo E. Vergara, Office of Admissions, Manila Campus. Assistant University Registrar Rufino J. Mandalihan, Department of Registration and Records Management. The candidates for graduation. From the right group, we have the recipients of Latin Honors. And for the left group, we have the College of Engineering Kaleopan.
Mission Tano Kan.
University Academic Marshal Assistant University Registrar Ruth S. Palanca. The Presidential Entourage. Team Veronica N. Elizalde, College of Business Administration, Manila. Dean Rogelio V. Paglomotan, College of Business Administration, Calaocan. Dean Victor R. Maham, Jr., College of Engineering, Calaocan. Dean Celino B. Santiago, College of Fine Arts, Architecture and Design. Chancellor Sosimo M. Batad, Calaocan Campus. <laughs> Chancellor, Chancellor Linda P. Santiago, Manila Campus. <laughs> Mr. Edgar B. Arcilia, Inductor to the Alumni Association. Mr. Cesar D. Kiambao, Commencement Speaker. <laughs> University Registrar Erwin B. Bermillo, Mace Bearer. <laughs> Dr. Esper A. Garcia, President and Chief Academic Officer. Please rise for the entrance of colors. It fits like it's out. Go! Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem to be led by the UE Koran. Celino B. Santiago of the College of Fine Arts, Architecture and Design will now present the candidates for graduation. Candidates for graduation in the College of Fine Arts, Architecture and Design. Please rise as I call your respective degree program. Madam President and Chief Academic Officer, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts major in Advertising Arts, Interior Design, and Painting, and the Bachelor of Industrial Design. They have been recommended by their respective faculty after having completed all the requirements prescribed by the university subject to the confirmation of the Board of Trustees of the University and the Commission on Higher Education. Dean Victor R. Macam Jr. of the College of Engineering, Calaocan, will now present the candidates for graduation. Candidates for graduation in the College of Engineering, Calaocan, please rise as I call your respective degree program. Madam President and Chief Academic Officer, 
I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Electronics and Communications Engineering. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Information System. <laughs> and Bachelor of Science in Information Technology. They have been recommended by their respective faculty after having completed all the requirements prescribed by this university subject to the confirmation of the Board of Trustees of the University and the Commission on Higher Education. Dean Veronica and Elizade of the College of Business Administration, Manila, will now present the candidates for graduation. Candidates for graduation in the College of Business Administration, Manila, please rise as I call your respective degree program. Madam President and Chief Academic Officer, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Accounting Technology. Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Management Accounting. <laughs> Business Management. <laughs> management. <laughs> Financial Management. <laughs> Banking and Finance. <laughs> Business Economics and marketing management. They have been recommended by the respective faculty after having completed all the requirements prescribed by this university subject to the confirmation of the Board of Trustees of the University and the Commission on Higher Education. Dean Rogelio V. Paglamotan of the College of Business Administration, Kalaokan, will now present the candidates for graduation. Candidates for graduation in the College of Business Administration, Kalookan, please rise as I call your respective degree program. Madam President and Chief Academic Officer, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. Bachelor of Science in Accountancy and Computer-Based Accounting Systems. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Accounting Technology. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Business Management. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Management. Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Financial Management. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Ma Business Administration, major in Management Accounting. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Marketing Management. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Marketing. They have been recommended by the respective faculty after having completed all the requirements prescribed by this university subject to the confirmation of the Board of Trustees of the University and the Commission on Higher Education. President Esther A. Garcia will now confer the degree upon the candidates for graduation. May I request all the candidates for graduation to please rise. By virtue of the authority vested upon me by law, 
and the powers delegated to me by the Board of Trustees of the University, and upon the recommendation of your respective faculty and dean, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have duly qualified, together with all the responsibilities, rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining. Subject to the confirmation of the Board of Trustees of the University and the Commission on Higher Education. You may now transfer your tassel to the right. Salde will now introduce the commencement speaker. President and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Esther Albano Garcia, Chancellor of Manila, Dr. Linda P. Sanchago, Chancellor of UE Caloacan, Dr. Sosimo Batad, the Academic and Administrative Officers, Faculty Members, the New Graduates, Parents, Relatives, Friends, and other guests, and our distinguished guest this afternoon. Magandang hapong po sa ating lahat. Our commencement speaker for this afternoon was born in Bayambang, Pangasinan on November 17, 1948. An exemplary UE alumnus who was chosen as one of the distinguished UE alumni achievers when UE marked its Diamond Jubilee in 2006, and a recipient of the Golden Walhati Award during the first global alumni reunion held in Las Vegas in June of 2010. He had set out to become a certified public accountant. So in eyeing an eye for his career, our distinguished guest had only one choice for his school, that is the University of the East. As a student, our commencement speaker was also a member of the Accounting Honor Society and went on to earn his degree of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in accounting, from the university in 1969. He is likewise a Master of Business Administration candidate of the UE Graduate School and completed the Strategic Business Economic Program from the University of Asia and the Pacific. His success as an entrepreneur can be traced to a healthy dose of patience, out-of-the-box thinking, and deep awareness of his humble beginnings. His out-of-the-box thinking and passion was displayed in the projects he pursued and exhibited even early in life. Our commencement speaker drove jeepneys at an holy hour of 11.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m., plying the Navotas Divisoria route when he was a UE student, and he had to run errands for his uncles. He had to babysit and do household chores and even took a job as a messenger. Working untiringly and a man in a hurry, our distinguished guest passed the CPA board exam right after graduation in 1969. Then he put up his own accounting firm. He later joined a pharmaceutical company, but after learning that it would take him a while to earn a senior position, he decided to take a job in Indonesia, which was offered to him in 1973. In 1984, after a successful venture in Indonesia's wood industry, as Executive Vice President of PT Green Timber Jaya from 1977 to 1982, he turned his sights on the booming construction industry projects. And then after that, 
After 20 years, no, he went back to the Philippines. He responded to the call of then President Fidel V. Ramos for Filipino businessmen who made good in other lands to come and invest in the Philippines as the country aspired for tiger status. He put up Strategic Alliance Holdings Incorporated, of which he served as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. As such, he structured a partnership between the Citra Group of Indonesia and the state-owned Philippine National Construction Corporation for the development of the Metro Manila Skyway Project, a 514 million investment. After the Skyway Project, the STAR was constructed, and again, this project costed $57 million. He put his knowledge of project financing to good use in putting together these two commercially beneficial infrastructure projects. Our brave-hearted warrior also believes in sponsoring livelihood and infrastructure projects that contribute to local development and has sent even a number of indigents but promise, promising children of Bayambang to school. Aside from putting up infra projects, our commencement speaker has made his mark in information technology. In fact, his company's IT partnership with the Land Transportation Office brought much relief to drivers who used to wait up to six months for their driver's license. That partnership between the LTO and our commencement speaker's Stratcom Corporation was considered as the first major Philippine government computerization project under the Build, Operate, and Transfer Law. Our distinguished guest's IT venture brought with it participation in the country's first ever successful automated election through another company of his called Strategic Alliance Holding Incorporated, which ran the August 2008 automated elections in Mindanao. Another partnership that he forged with the government is the computerization of the land registration system. Later on, he set his sights on Guam, noticing that Guam residents seeking medical procedures in the Philippines, he founded the Guam Regional Medical City, a partnership with our country's medical city. This Guam hospital is set for completion in 2014. In sum, our distinguished guest is now President and Chief and CEO of Stratcom Corporation, Chairman and CEO of Strategic Alliance Holdings Incorporated, and Vice Chairman of Guam Healthcare Development Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, I implore you to rise to welcome our distinguished guest and commencement speaker this afternoon, Mr. Cesar T. Campbell. Please be seated. Thank you very much, Vindu uh, Visalia. To the distinguished members of the Board of Trustees, to the esteemed President and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Esther Garcia, to the Chancellors of Manila and Caloacan campuses, the deans of the different colleges, members of the faculty, parents, guests, friends, and to the graduating students, good afternoon. I'm greatly honored to be with you today at your commencement from one of the best universities in the country. From one of the best universities in the country.
to all of you graduates in resplendent graduation robes and togas, my heartfelt congratulations. As I look, okay, clap for yourselves. As I look back at what had transpired in my life, four decades after graduation, course from our alma mater, the University of the East, I feel a mixed emotion. I am transported to the time and place when I had my own graduation ceremony, and my thoughts were as clear then as they are now. And so what I intend to do is to achieve a nobler purpose in this commencement address. I want to impart to you the life lessons that I have learned. In so doing, I'm sharing with you my own experiences that you may profit from. When I was a student like you, I drove cheapness from 11.30 in the evening to 1.30 in the morning. That is flying the Navotas to the Visoria because I was living with my uncle in Tondo at that time. I had grease all over, smelled of cigarette smoke, and my hands, of course, were busy collecting fares. I learned many, many things. Sempre as a driver, you tend to violate traffic regulations. One time I was apprehended by a policeman in Divisoria, and immediately I told him, Boss, pasensya na po, wala pa po tayong kita. Ano sabi ng polis? Anong pasensya? Wala rin si Aling Pasing. Hindi namin kilala si Aling Pasing. Anyway, pasensya is an overused word we always encounter as we journey through our life. In English, we call it patience. It is the most important word I have learned in making the grade, in fulfilling the promise to earn my first million before reaching the age of 30, in making a dream for my compatriots a reality, in making good at every step of my career as a tax consultant, as a lawyer, as a property developer in Indonesia, and then IT entrepreneur, project catalyst, venture businessman in the Philippines, and the medical center proponent in the island of Guam. This is the art of my story. As a driver, sabi nila, as a driver, you are also a sweet lover. This is where I learned much, and this is where I hone my street smarts that led conceive of a big business idea. It was such a huge idea that later led to generating revenues amounting to billions of pesos over 10 years. But that, my friends, is getting ahead of the story. My very first job was as a messenger and a clerk in welding industries of the Philippines owned by Mr. Open. And I enjoyed that work. Why? I call it a dignified messenger because I have a driver and a service vehicle because our office was located in Nubaliches, so masyadong malayo. My job description then was an accounting clerk in the morning and I do messengerial work in the afternoon. I was lucky that every five o'clock I'm already at Recto Avenue. Six months later, I was promoted as accounting clerk because of that promotion, I was occasionally late in my classes. Later on, I would meet Mr. Open, and how surprised he was to know 
that I was involved in a big growth project in the country. My next jobs were in a pharmaceutical company. Then I formed my own accounting office. And later on, I was invited to relocate to Indonesia. I arrived in Jakarta, Indonesia on a Maundy Thursday in 1973 with only 50 US dollars in my pocket. I kept it in my wrist pocket, baka mawala ko pa. Immediately, I was transplanted from the land of my youth to a land of new beginnings, of new horizon, of a new frontier. It is here that I learned my second lesson in life. I spent my first few months in studying the Indonesian rules and regulations in banking, in taxation, including the central bank regulations. After three months, I had a baptism of fire. I was invited by the boss to join the first board meeting. Of course, I was nervous, but because of the painstaking preparations that I made, I, would feel I was so confident at that time. When I was asked whether the company has complied with all its obligations under the laws of Indonesia, I dropped the pump shell. I told the board, the company has totally violated all the taxation and the foreign investment laws in Indonesia. But at the middle of my report, I was cast short by an arrogant Indonesian general who questioned my findings. I saw the glimpse of a sneaker in the Indian military man's demeanor, considering that I was young and had just arrived from Manila. I defended my findings. I cited the provisions of the laws that were violated and the general keep quiet after that. This is then lesson number two. Always be prepared. Always be ready and commit your heart to all that is there to know in your line of work. For it is preparation that would open opportunities for you. This lesson would lead me to lesson number three. Be aware of opportunities that are presented to you. After that board meeting, I looked around and I realized that there were 850 Indonesian certified public accountants or registered public accountants out of a population of 120 million. In 1970, my number was already as a CPA 21,752. And that was in 1970, out of the population of 70 million. That gave me an idea to form an accounting office in Indonesia and engage in taxation services. But being a foreigner, I was not allowed to practice, so I had to partner with an Indonesian registered public accountant. And we called our partnership Dr. Randos Pulumahuni and Company. My first client, of course, was the company who hired me from Manila. And we were able to garner or service nine Filipino companies out of 13. And one of these companies are the Soriano Group of Companies, the Sarmientos, the Valencias, and of course, United Laboratories, because I came from UNILAB at the time. But to be able to garner these clients, it was not easy. We were tested and we were able to service two tax cases free of charge. As a matter of fact, Congressman Sarmiento compensated me by treating me to a movie. The movie at that time called The Towering Inferno. Later on, I became a lager 
And it is this phase of my life that I learned lesson number four. Have word of honor. Be true to your word, no matter how difficult it may be. I was enticed to become a partner in the lagging venture by a Filipino compatriot who turned out not to have the financial muscle to pursue the venture. Early on, the Indonesian official who owned the lagging concession told me about the shenanigans of this kababayan, but I did not listen. I told them he has the capacity. I still persisted in getting the necessary license for the business. Here I put on my resources to keep the company afloat and buy new lagging equipment as failure to do so would have cost me my word of honor. Later on, our partnership soured. My partner went back to the Philippines and he practically lost everything. Meanwhile, my career was prepared by my strong network in business. Back in 1987, on my way to Jakarta Airport, as I was going back to the Philippines, I saw for myself what Indonesia inaugurated, an ambitious multi-level Skyway project. And I was a bit disheartened that we didn't have that kind of infrastructure. I asked myself, what if the Philippines adopted this kind of infrastructure program? I wrestled with the thought as I became a witness to the explosive infrastructure growth in Indonesia. The thought consumed me and brought up times my musings as a driver when I was a student. It was a patient wait. Eleven years later, I was given the opportunity to pursue the $514 million Metro Manila Skyway project. But this project became a reality as a happy mix of my earlier days as a businessman with word of honor, my enduring patience, and my desire to see for myself that what I see in Indonesia would also become a reality in the land of my birth. This project, the first infrastructure under the public-private partnership with the government, arose again because of word of honor. It was another detour for my journey, a pleasant surprise, I would say. And it started when I was able to get the attention of the daughter of no less than the President of Indonesia. Because I committed to bringing in Filipino youth to the ASEAN Youth Congress, which the daughter of the President presides upon.